Chapter 31. So, does anybody have a clue as to why we were supposed to find this book? asked Kyle. He and his teammates were back in the young adult room staring at the cover of Get to Know Your Local Library. Too early to tell, said Miguel. Let's keep playing. This book will probably make more sense once we go into the other rooms and pick up more clues. Whose turn is it? asked Akimi. Yours, said Kyle. Flick the spinner. Akimi finger kicked the plastic pointer. Purple, she yelled when the arrow slid to a stop. The 800s. That means you move eight spaces, mumbled Kyle. Except today, Akimi reached for the card on top of the purple stack. When she saw, when she saw what was written on it, she frowned. What's the clue? asked Kyle. Something about literature, rhetoric, or criticism? asked Miguel. Nope, said Akemi. It's a wild card with a riddle. Read it, said Sierra. I rhyme with dart and cracker jacks. Visit me and find a rhyme for Andy. Peckleman, said Kyle. How'd he get his name on a game card? Bro, said Miguel, nobody calls Andrew Peckerman Andy. Of course, it could mean Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States. Or Andy Panda, said Akimi. Or Andrew Carnegie, said Sierra. He was a generous supporter of libraries. Okay, said Kyle, let's concentrate on the first part of the riddle. What rhymes with dart and cracker jacks? Smart and heart attacks, suggested Miguel. Art and bric-a-brac, said Sierra. Art and artifacts, said Akimi, nailing it. They hurried over to the art and artifacts room. Everybody, check out the display cases, said Kyle. See if anything rhymes with the word Andy. Well, this model of the old bank building is certainly grandy, said Miguel. And the Pahora's Pyramid and Sphinx would be sandy if they weren't made out of Legos. True, said Kyle, sounding unconvinced about both. Check it out, you guys, cried Akimi, who was studying a row of styrofoam heads sporting hats. This plaid fedora from 1968 was worn by a guy named Leopold Loblolly. So, said Kyle, according to this plaque, Lablali was one of the notorious dandy bandits. Dandy rhymes with Andy. That it does, said Miguel. However, Lablali does not. Neither does Leopold, added Kyle. Candy rhymes with Andy, said Sierra. She was staring at the objects in a display case under a banner reading, Welcome to the Wonderful World of Willy Wonka. Awesome, said Miguel, hurrying over to admire the collection of everlasting gobstop gobstoppers, glumptuous glob gobblers, laffy taffy, and pixie sticks displayed under glass in a sea of purple velvet. Mr. Limoncello is a lot like Willy Wonka, said Kyle. You mean crazy, said Akimi. I prefer the term eccentric. And Dr. Zinchinko is his Oompa Loompa, said Sierra. Everybody started giggling. Nah, Akimi joked, she's too tall. And not nearly orange enough, added Miguel. The Willy Wonka book was written by, by Roald Dow, and Sierra, who Kyle figured, could name 12 other books the guy wrote to. In it, Mr. Wonka takes Charlie and Grandpa Joe home in a flying grass glass elevator that crashes through the roof of his chocolate factory. Everybody thought about that for a second. So now we have to find a glass elevator, said Akimi, because there isn't one on the floor plan. But Mr. Limoncello is just wild enough to build one, said Kyle. And if he did, he probably wouldn't put it on the floor plan. No way, said Miguel. Everybody would want to ride on it. I know I would, said Sierra. So we're seriously searching for a secret glass elevator, said Akimi. Maybe, said Kyle. Maybe not. This is just another piece of gigantic jigsaw puzzle. We won't see the whole picture until we collect all the pieces. Or someone shows us the box lid, cracked Akimi. Look, it's only 6 p.m., said Kyle, and we're collecting a ton of good information. 
You mean a ton of random information, said Akimi? Well, said Miguel, once we have more clues, we can use Sherlock Holmes' famous deductive reasoning method to make logical connections between all the random junk. Works for me, said Kyle. But if we're going to play Sherlock Holmes, we need to go spin that spinner and dig up more clues. That's a, that game's afoot, said Sierra. Huh? Kyle and Akimi said it together. Sorry, it's just something Sherlock Holmes says to Watson whenever he gets excited. Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes, Kyle had just found another bunch of books to add to his reading list. Chapter 32. Okay, Sierra, said Kyle, your turn. Sierra flicked the spinner. The pointy tip ended up in the yellow 200 zone, so she went ahead and pulled a yellow card. It's definitely for the 200 section, said she said, showing her clue to Miguel before revealing it to Kyle and Akimi. Kimi. Weird, said Miguel. What, said Akimi, before Kyle could. Well, the 200s are where, the, where they keep books on world religions. But there are two numbers on this card, said Sierra. Maybe this time we need to find two books, suggested Kyle. I don't know, said Sierra, studying her card. 220.5203 is obviously a call number. Obviously, said Akimi, but this other number isn't in the proper format. 2-2015, February 20th, 2015, said Akimi. Quick, what happened on that date? Um, nobody knows, said Kyle, because it hasn't happened yet. Oh, right, okay. How about February 20th, 1915? That was the opening day of the Panama Pacific International Exposition in San Francisco, said Sierra. Jaws dropped. Sorry, I'm a big World's Fair fan. Everybody else just nodded. Finally, Miguel spoke up. Look, let's go down to the 200s room and find 220.5203. We can figure out the second chunk later. The team once again trooped down to the second floor and worked their way around the circular balcony. You guys, said Sierra, looking across the atrium at the statues. Remember how they switched all the hologram authors when Bridget Wodge did her extreme challenge? Yep, said Kyle. She was doing good till she got to the Russian dude. What Russian dude? asked Miguel, who, didn't, who hadn't witnessed Bridget's elimination. Guy who wrote five or six books Sierra could tell you about. But look, said Sierra, now all the author's statues are the same ones they were last night. So, said Kyle thoughtfully, if they can't switch them around, there must be clues for our game, blurted Akimi. She pulled out a pen and her notepad. I'll write down their names. Start with the guy under the triple zeros wedge of the Wonder Dome, suggested Kyle. Right. Akimi read the labeled pedestals and jotted down all the author's name. Thomas Wolfe, Booker T. Washington, Stephen Sodham, George Orwell, Lewis Carroll, Dr. Seuss, Maya Angelou, Shel Silverstein, Tsunamis Bosch, Todd Strasser. So, said Akimi when she'd finished writing, do you think this game could get any more complicated? Maybe, said Kyle. It's possible that Mr. Limoncello left a couple different paths to the same solution. Well, personally, I can only take one path at a time, said Akimi. So let's go find 220 point whatever. Should be in the next row of bookcases, said Miguel. Here we go. 220.5203, the King James Bible. An excellent choice, said a man with a thick German accent. The four teams spun around and were face to face with a semi-transparent guy in medieval garb with a fur-trimmed cap and a beard that looked like two raccoon tails sewn together under his nose and chin. I am Johannes Jelfish Zur Laden Zoom Gutenberg, said the holographic image, who had ink stains all over his fingertips. You created the Gutenberg Bibles on your printing press, Gush Sierra. Ja, 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 big, big bestseller. You need help with your Bible? I am at your service, he bowed. Okay, said Akimi, turning to Miguel. Take it away, Miguel. Uh, Guttenberg, sir, we're looking for 2-2015. Das esk e fa. Huh? That is easy. 2-2015 is Exodus, chapter 20, verse 15. 
Of course, said Miguel. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. 20 and 15 are, are the chapter and verse. He flipped through some pages. Here we go. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal.